Ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you the Member of Parliament for St. Michael Northeast and the Prime Minister of Barbados, Mia Amor Motley. Right now she got five stars. Please also welcome on stage campaign manager, Dr. the Most Honorable Jerome Walcott. Deputy campaign manager, Pat Paris. And campaign consultant and strategist, Hartley Henry. She got five star lower. We vote in Mia and more. She's the best PM for me. Mia and the BLP. And the Come MP for St. Philip South in the where? I want to thank, first of all, the Almighty. And to give thanks for the grace that he has bestowed upon us to allow us to be standing here after a day where the world's newest parliamentary republic has reinforced its commitment to the best precepts of democracy. And I say so because there are many countries in the world that cannot speak about a process such as this that has been kept without any kind of rancor or any kind of violence or serious division. When I spoke to you on the 27th of December, I asked us to recognize that there are times in the life of a nation when we need to go back to the people and when we need to be able to allow the people in whom power resides to make decisions about its future. It became clear to us that the ability to prepare this nation for the serious challenges that we will face in the next 10 to 15 years required that we give the people of this nation the option of choosing who it wanted to lead it into that process. We stand today on the morning of the 20th of January, confident that the people of this nation have spoken with one voice, decisively, unanimously, and clearly. We want each and every one of us to thank the people of Barbados for the confidence that they continue to repose in us to be able to lead this country first to safety and then to prosperity. The last two years have not been easy. And it has been a fact of record that we have spent more time in our previous term under the threat of the COVID pandemic, 24 months, as opposed to the 19 months that we initially had. We are conscious as a political institution that there is still much to be done and that there is a road still to be traveled. 
and that there are things that you as Barbadians are legitimately expecting of us. But we are equally conscious that it comes very rarely to a generation to change the pattern of history and to transform a nation. In a very real sense, we felt, as we told you in 2018, that we had been existing on the fumes of the independence generation rather than seeking to carry this nation forward and to release the opportunities that are so obviously available, particularly to Barbadians and young Barbadians. We showed you that we have confidence in our future by finding the money in the middle of an IMF program to invest in our young people through the revision of the policies that would allow us once again to offer free education from pre-primary to tertiary levels. We showed you that we were prepared to honor the best precepts of the father of our democracy and the father of our independence. And I refer specifically to the right excellence of Grant Lee Adams and the right excellent Errol Walton Barrow by having a foreign policy that continues to say that as Barbadians, we shall be friends of all and satellites of none. We showed you that we understood the continuum that was ours and that enfranchisement was not simply to be about political enfranchisement or social enfranchisement, but in the legacy of the great Tom Adams, that economic enfranchisement started by him and continued by Owen Seymour Arthur would be that path upon which we would continue as a nation. And hence our manifesto was entitled, Our Barbados, Owning Our Future. It is our solemn commitment that there are many things that must now be on the front burner. And that is why we came to you earlier. We could have stayed on for another 18 months and drawn salary and done just enough to keep us going. But we understood that it would not be enough to keep this country safe or to build the platform for prosperity. So we took the risk and we came to you, the people. And in spite of all, all of the, all of the noise, a little tired this morning. In spite of all of the side talk, I am so proud of each and every one of the members of this team who displayed a discipline, who displayed the finest example of Barbadian behavior and who stayed focused on what matters to you. Because as we go forward, we fight battles that go beyond our nation. From St. Lucie to St. Philip, we are still repairing houses of people whose house was lost in the freak storm and in Hurricane Elsa, our first hurricane in 66 years. We also know that we have among us a problem that we do not have enough people coming to work every day to sustain our social security system, to make sure that those of you who have contributed can get pensions in the future because of our declining population and workforce. And today, as if it didn't matter, many of you have heard me speak about a responsibility that the 
Director General of the World Health Organization gave me to lead with the Prime Minister of Bangladesh the One Health Global Initiative. And why is that important? Because even as we face this COVID pandemic, only today a study has come out on the 19th of January showing that the greatest, one of the greatest threats and one of the greatest causes to human life is in fact antimicrobial resistance and that it is now responsible for the loss of 1.2 million deaths a year or in simple terms, 3,500 people dying every single day across this earth because of our inability to fight the super viruses. So when we said to you that this country has serious issues to confront, and when we talk about the need for economic diversification such that a 90% decline in tourism arrivals will never decimate the fear and fortunes of the people of this nation, we were not joking. And I thank you, 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 the people of Barbados, for accepting us at our word that if we do not fix our problems starting from tomorrow, we will not be able to guarantee safety to our people in the next 10 to 15 years. But I want to come down to the basics. This campaign has been rough. You can hear it in my voice and the voice of many of us. We wanted to start 2022 as far as possible on a fresh guard. We are a cricketing nation and we know what it means to take fresh guard. And you have given us that opportunity. I said on the 27th of May, 2018, that to whom much is given, much is expected. I repeat tonight that that is our commitment to you, the people of this nation. I promised you at Bay Street that we would be the opposition to ourselves. And regrettably, there were those who felt that they would spawn their own opposition and do the things that would make this country almost difficult to govern. But tonight, the people of Barbados have spoken. I repeat that in the same way as Prime Minister of this nation, I exercised a discipline and a commitment to reduce the powers of Prime Minister by refusing to accept that I would have the wide power for the appointment of a head of state or the wide power for the appointment of a chief justice and judges. I repeat tonight that we shall continue to put the nation's fairness and affairs above that of the well-being of a parliamentary majority that is absolute. But it would be remiss of me not to address this one issue because we went into this election with people accusing us of wanting to have a one state, one party state, when in truth and in fact, our constitution admits in a multi-party democracy of the people given all of the seats to one entity. I am a child of democracy. I know what it is to have known every single prime minister in this nation since Errol Walton Barrow. 
And it is that solemn commitment in front of you, the people of this nation, in front of the people of the world, and in particular in front of my parliamentary colleagues, that I swear today that we shall continue to keep the best precepts of democracy, transparency, and accountability alive for the people of this nation. I want, at this point, however, because the hour is late, to tell you that it is our intention tomorrow morning, I now announce that the Honorable Dale Marshall who has served this nation with distinction and who, in spite of all of the challenges we face from debt to pandemic, who has never once said to me, Mia, I am too tired, Prime Minister, I can't do it, but who has remained available at the service of this nation 24-7 shall be the new Attorney General of Barbados in this republic. In accordance with the Constitution of Barbados, therefore, the Parliamentary Party of Barbados, of the Barbados Labour Party, met and have asked me to serve yet again as their leader. And I have humbly accepted. In a few hours, we anticipate that we will go, therefore, to the State House, accompanied by the General Secretary of this great party, the Honorable Jerome Walcott. The person who I propose to appoint as the leader of government business in the House of Assembly, my sister, Santia Bradshaw. And you will forgive me for the emotion of this next one. The General Secretary of the Barbados Workers' Union, who for the first time in 65 years is on the platform of a Barbados Labour Party general election victory. It has been a long and grueling campaign, not from the point of view of time, but from the point of view of the day after Boxing Day to now. I therefore propose that I will address the nation on Monday evening with respect to who shall constitute the cabinet of Barbados. And I do so conscious that these good men and women, and I dare say myself, <laughs> deserve a little rest so that I do not continue to announce matters in a raspy voice. I want to call forward Comrade Pat Paris, who has performed with distinction yet again effectively the role of keeping the administration of this great political party together. Well done, Pat. And I want to ask my brother, the General Secretary of the Barbados Labour Party, who has worked, I told you last night, that if there were only two people that knew what I was doing, it was he and me. And I felt for the rest of the others. I can say without fear of contradiction that in this election, I was allowed to be a leader 
and a campaigner while the administration of this campaign was anchored by these two comrades and great stalwarts of this great party. But Pat and Jerome come forward again. Because, you know, life is funny. And it is an example in life. That sometimes you may have persons who may not always be with you. But it is always necessary to take fresh guard and to see people for who they are. I want to call forward the greatest political strategist in the post-independence Caribbean, Hartley Sylvester Henry. who has walked this journey with us. And some may believe that political strategy is about machinations. But the genius of this man has been in understanding the essence of what it is to be a Bajan. And in understanding what it is in the essence, to be a Bajan. He has combined with the wonderful talent of this parliamentary team such that we merge together the essence of politics and the essence of development to be able to make your life better. It would be necessary for me to say to you, that there are so many of my colleagues who have asked, how have you, in the middle of an international monetary fund program, kept the will of the people and the support of the people with you? And it is because we have found that sweet spot that has combined the best of political strategy with the best of development economics and development policy, with the best of the will of the people of this country, in one simple phrase, that Barbadians believe in fairness, that we shall share the burden of adjustment together on condition that we shall share the bounty of accomplishment together. And my friends, that continues to be our way. The fact that we went to Solidarity House and launched a covenant of hope that told you who we were, what we stand for, and what we shall fight for was not a public relations exercise. The fact that we settled on a charter of Barbados after consultation with the people of Barbados, before we became a parliamentary republic, was not a PR exercise. We shall walk the walk and not just talk the talk. And finally, we shall do so conscious that we come from a great institution that has taught us that in life, we know what it is to win and lose. And I can find no better way to bring these proceedings to an end than to quote from that plaque which inspires all who enter 111 Roebuck Street, stated by the wife of Sir Grant Lee Herbert Adams, Lady Grace Adams. And I share this in particular for the young people of this nation. This house has been our refuge in times of defeat and our haven in times of victory. The scene of disappointment and success. In times of defeat, the people of this house 
have been completely vanquished, but have braced themselves to face yet another encounter. In times of triumph, they have glorified the Lord who made it possible. May all who enter here continue to go forward together, united in every effort, remembering that those who, the work, who work for a great cause shall never fail. May they be blessed with wisdom from God to continue to follow the right path. We shall continue to labor in the great cause of the transformation of the newest parliamentary republic and one of the greatest nations on this earth, our country, Barbados. Thank you. God bless you. And may we continue to prosper as a nation. Please get home safely. And please, please, please continue to monitor that all of the protocols, I love you, I love you, I love you. Good night and God bless you all. Thank you.